This is lesson three of Cantonese style mahjong. In the first lesson, I showed you the tiles, and then I showed you the sets that you use when playing mahjong. You can have a chow, which is three in sequence, a pung, which is three of a kind, a kong, which is four of a kind, and of course you have a pair. So while you play the game, you need 13 tiles in your hand, and the 14th tile makes your winning tile. The standard combination of tiles is four sets and a pair. So when you play the game, you're going to be picking and discarding, claiming discards or drawing all the tiles concealed until you have a winning combination. I want to show you now how to set up a game. So each player is seated at the table and each one is assigned a direction. So if I'm the dealer, I'm going to have the dice and I am known as East. East will have the dice and they are, they are the dealer, so to speak. The players around them also have a wind. If I'm East, the player to my right going counterclockwise is South. The player across from me is West and the player to my left is North. East, South, West, North. And also that corresponds to a number. East is one, South is two, West is three, and North is four. Right now we're gonna build the wall. Each player will build their own wall. Here's a quick way to do it. You grab four tiles and then four more. So you have eight. Then you go up four. So there's 16 tiles. You push these middle, from the middle, you push up that first row, then you pinch the tiles and stack it. And then you pinch the tiles in the back and stack them. And then you put those two together. So there's 16 tiles right there, 16 too high. Then you're gonna grab another two stacks and add them to each side. Each wall is gonna be made up of 18. So there's the first wall. And each player does their own, so everyone's doing this at the same time. Push, pinch, stack. Pinch, stack. And then grab two more. It's really quick if you have people with you. <laughs> I'm just by myself, so I have to do it all. Okay, there's the wall. Now, in Cantonese style, each of the players will curtsy their built wall before the deal, so everyone can reach those tiles. And now we can deal the tiles. So East will take the dice and roll them, and they'll add the dice and then count the players around the table counterclockwise for where to break the wall. Breaking the wall is like cutting the deck if you're playing cards. So here we have a nine. So you would count around the table nine starting with east. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. For a quicker way, you can just cut it 
with if it's east, east is going to be odd, starting with odds, you can go one, three, five, seven, nine. So that would be me. I'm going to count right to left nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I'm going to make a split in the wall. And this is the end of the wall. So we're going to deal from here and go all the way around, picking and discarding until we get to here, the end of the wall. Also, the end of the wall is where you're going to get your replacement tiles for your flowers and kongs. And a lot of times people will just stack the last tiles so that everybody knows where to get their replacement tiles. So here we're going to start the deal. East will take four. And then the next player, counterclockwise, will take four and so on until everybody has 12 tiles. Now, East will take what's called one and three or jump because they would end up with this tile anyway. East gets their first drawn tile at the beginning. So I'm gonna take one so you can see how that works. So there's my 13th tile. And now they get their 13th tile. This player will get their 13th and so on. And East would have ended up with this tile anyway. Some people call that jump as well because they jump over that second tile on top. So at this point, everyone's gonna look at their tiles and they're first gonna see if they have any flowers because you can't play with flowers in your hand. You need to exchange them for a playable tile. So let's go ahead and look and see what we ended up with here. Okay, so as East, I'm responsible for declaring flowers first. I have one flower. So I'm gonna just put that to the right and say East has one flower. This is a really nice start. Look, one suit. One suit with winds and dragons. That's gonna be a nice start there. Okay, so I have one tile or one flower that I'm gonna replace. And then each player in turn will do the same thing. So the player on the left of the dealer, or on the right of the dealer, I'm sorry, is next. So they'll say, in this case, they have two. So they'll put those to their right and they'll take two as a replacement. Just keep stacking it to show where those tiles are to be taken from when you have flowers and cons. This player has one, so they would then get their replacement And this player doesn't have any. So now East can start. For flowers, if you remember at the beginning when I said that each player is at a seat wind and each player is also associated to a number. So East is one, South is two, West is three, and North is four. Whatever flowers you get, that number can bring you score if it's the right one. So in this case, I'm the dealer, so I'm number one. So I drew a two flower. This flower is not gonna bring me score in this case. But in, in a sense, it's okay because now I have a two flower. My player on the right, who is number two, they won't get this because I've already got it. So don't feel bad if you don't get your own flower and you get the other flowers. It's okay because you're taking that opportunity for score away from your opponents. Over here, this player also has a two flower. So this player over here, south or number two, they're not gonna get their own flower. Over here, the player on the left south, they have one and three. So they don't have their own flower either, but they have east flower, number one, and they have west's flower, number three. So that's how flowers work, as far as score goes. If you also get one, two, three, four, all the same color, that's called a bouquet, and that's worth 
too fine once everyone has their initial flowers replaced. So for this situation, we have here a chow, a pear, here's another pear and a, and a nine dot, but really we can just make these chows. So right now we have two chows, a potential chow, and several honors. So if I'm east, I'm going to save my east wind because I can get a, a fawn for that if I happen to pair it up. Same with these dragons. I want to tell you also about the wind of the round. In Cantonese style, every player will have an opportunity to be east in a round. So if I'm the first dealer, I'll have the dice and I will keep the dice until I lose a hand. When I lose a hand, the dice will go to the next player. So this first round, while everybody gets a chance to be east, is called the east round. And there are several types of indicators that you can get to help keep track of it. This is one of them. And I'll have links below of where you can get some indicators. So this first round is called the east round. Anytime you get a pung or a kong of, e of the wind of the round, in this case east, you'll get a fawn for that. So let's say that I'm the south player over here. If I get a pung of east wind, even though it's not my wind, if I'm south, I'm not east, but east is the wind of the round. So I would get a fawn for that if I get a pung of east. So this indicator will stay here all night long. Whoever was the first dealer, that indicator would stay there. Then this player um, would be east. They would roll the dice and play until they lost. And then the dice would go to the next player and so on. When the dice get back to this original east, then it becomes the south round. And that continues until you complete four rounds, which would be east round, south, west, and north round finally. So again, each player has an opportunity to be east for each round. And that round, if you get a pung or a kong of that particular wind for that round, you can get score for that. So I'm going to go ahead and throw away some of these other wins that I really can't get score for. So I'm going to throw a north. And if anybody else has two norths, they can claim that tile. In this case, I don't think anybody has it. So let me see. Nope. So because nobody has it, this player here can go ahead and draw and they can now discard once they've drawn. So we're gonna have them discard a five dot. And now it's this player's turn, unless somebody can claim that discard. Now this player does have a four and a six. Four dot, six dot. So they're going to chow. Because the player on the left of this player discarded that tile and they have two tiles to complete a set, they can claim it. So they're going to say chow and they'll put it out to their right and take that discard and make their exposure. Anytime you claim a discard, you have to make an exposure of that set. And then they would then discard at this point. So they are going to discard a three dam. And now it's this player's turn. Now this player would look in their hand to see if they're interested in that discard. And in this case, they're not. Let's see if this player over here has any three bams that they could, yep. This player actually has a Kong. They have three three bams. Let's make a Kong out of that. So they're gonna put those tiles to their right, and they're gonna claim that three bam for a Kong. And then they're gonna get a replacement tile because they would be short a tile if they didn't get a replacement for that Kong. And you indicate a Kong like that. You just stack it because technically it's counted as three tiles once you get that replacement tile. So we're gonna put that there and then we're gonna discard 
a six dot. And then the game continues. So turns will be skipped during this game. If pawns are claimed, turns can be skipped. So they threw a six dot. This player's not interested. This player can't take it. And because this player, this player is in dots, but they don't have a pair. In order to claim a pun, you have to have two tiles to go with that third tile. And in this case, they do not. And you think, well, can't they take like make a five, six, seven? You cannot make a chow three in a sequence from anybody but the player on your left. So the wrong person threw it for that particular tile. So we're gonna go ahead and have this player draw. And then discard, nine ma'am. Then it would be this player's turn. They would pick and discard, two dot. And this person over here has a pung. Here's a pair in their hand of two dots. So they would say pung, and now those two turns get skipped. So they would take that tile put it out by their side, their right, and then they would throw a one ban and the game would continue like that. So eventually somebody would have four sets and a pair or another configure, valid configuration and the game would cease or the wall would be depleted and the game would cease as a draw. So that's how you claim a chow, a pung, and a Kong and how you exchange flowers. The next lesson, I'm gonna show you how to build a hand and how to go from zero points up to the best kind of score that you can get.